Welcome to Automate Now. This is part two on the page object model. I'm Marco Cruz. In today's video, we'll learn about properties files. We'll also learn more about page objects in base classes. Let's dive in. Let us now do a quick review on what we did in part one. And here we see this class called homepage test, which has two tests that perform some very simple operations on our website. We also see that this class extends the base test. If you go to the base test class, we see that we have two methods, before suite and after suite. The setup method takes care of setting up the browser for us, and the teardown closes the browser. And up here we have two page objects. These are empty classes at the moment, but we'll begin to add more stuff as we go on. What we're going to do today is concentrate on this base test class in our homepage test class. Here we see references to driver. We also see some XPath locators. We're going to clean this up so that we don't have any references to driver or locators within our tests. Those are implementation details that do not belong in these tests. The same thing goes for the base test class. We're going to get rid of any references to the web driver. We're going to start by creating what is called a properties file. Such file is used to store any data that is not likely to change within our application. And it contains what are called key value pairs. The data we're going to store is going to be, for example, this URL. We're also going to store the type of browser that we're using. We'll begin by creating a new package. Let's right click on this package up here and say new package. We're going to remove this part that says pages and we're going to call it config and hit enter. Now we're going to right click this new package and say new file. The name of this file is going to be config.properties. The first key value pair we're going to store here is going to be browser equals Chrome. Next, we're going to store the URL that we're going to be using. And we're going to call this one base URL equal to, I'm going to grab the base URL from this base test class down here. And we're done. Notice that there are no quotes being used or any commas in this file. The next thing we're going to do is to write the code that is going to load this file. We're going to create a new class in this package called pages. This is going to be another base class, similar to the one that we have down here called base test. In this case, it is going to be called base page. This is going to be the base page for our page objects. So let's go ahead and right click here and say new Java class and call it base page. This class is going to contain any code that may be common to any other page objects. So let's begin building it. The first thing that we're going to need is going to be the web driver. So let's go ahead and say protected static web driver. And we're simply going to call it driver. In case you're wondering, the protected keyword is saying that this object is only going to be available for those classes that inherit this class. Static means that we're only going to create one instance of this object, meaning that we will only have one web driver that will be shared across the different classes. Next, we're going to say public string browser and public string base URL. And lastly, public properties properties. Notice that properties is a Java class that comes from this package. Next, we're going to create a method that is going to load our properties file. We're going to make this method private. It won't return anything, so we'll just say void. And we're going to call it load properties. In order to read this file, we're going to need a file input stream. So we'll say file input stream. And this comes from the java.io package. We'll simply call it FIS. And we'll set it to null for now. Since we're dealing with the file system, different things can happen. For example, the file may not be available, or the disk drive may be busy. So we're going to use a try catch block in case an exception occurs when we attempt to read the file. So we'll say try, and then properties equals new properties. Next, we'll say FIS is equal to new file input stream. And this requires that we pass in the path for our properties file. We're going to grab the path for this file by right clicking on it. And we say copy path and then select absolute path. Then in quotes, we're going to paste that path here. Next, we're going to say properties dot load. 
and we're going to pass in the file that we read, which is FIS. Next, we're going to say browser is equal to properties, and we're going to use a method called get property. And remember that we said that the properties file contains key value pairs. In this case, this get property method requires that we pass in the key. The key that we want is the browser. So we're going to say browser. When this statement executes, it's going to go to this properties file and look for the key called browser. This is going to return Chrome, which is then going to be stored in this browser variable. We're going to do the same thing for the base URL. So I'm going to say base URL is equal to properties that get property and the key is called base URL. Notice that we're being alerted that there are some errors in our code. If I put my mouse over this, we see that there is an unhandle exception, file not found. This type of exception can occur, for example, if this file does not exist in the system. We have a similar error down here when we're trying to load this file, and this is an IO exception, which could happen, for instance, if the C drive is busy or is inaccessible. So we will need to write some code to handle these exceptions that could occur. We'll do that by writing a catch block. The first catch is going to be file not found. We're going to call this E for exception. And we will simply say E dot print stack trace. And this is simply going to print the stack trace to the console. Later on, we can worry about logging this type of errors. Next, we need to catch the other type of exception. We're going to write another catch block. And in this case, it's going to be IO exception and call it E as well. And we'll do the same E dot print stack trace. The last step we're going to do is very important. Say for instance that this code tries to execute and an error occurs. The file is not found. We will need to make sure that this input stream is closed before our program ends. And we do that by using a keyword called finally. And here we're going to say fis.close. Notice that once again, we have another error here that says that we have an unhandled exception. This exception could occur during the closing process. So I'm just gonna go here to this red bulb and select surround with try catch. And that will take care of handling this exception. We're gonna create another private method and this is going to be the one used to open the browser. So I'm gonna say private void open browser. And in here, we're gonna use an if statement. If browser dot equals, I'm gonna say Chrome, we'll say driver is equal to new Chrome driver. We're using this if statement just in case in the future we want to support multiple browsers. Next, we'll say driver.manage.window.maximize. And we're going to write another method for closing the browser. This one will be public. You'll see why later. So we'll say public void close browser. And we'll say driver.quit. So, so far we have created a method for loading the properties file, a method for opening the browser, and another one for closing the browser. The last one we're going to do is a method to navigate to the home page. So we'll say public, this will return a Boolean, and it's going to be called go to home page. We'll use the try catch block here. And from this method, we're going to call one of these private methods. The first method we're going to call is load properties. Once the properties are loaded, we're going to open the browser. So we're going to call open browser. And lastly, we're going to say driver.get and we'll pass in base URL. Then we'll write a catch block. We'll say exception, call it E. And in the event that an exception occurs, we're simply going to do a print statement here and say unable to navigate to the home page. Then we'll say e dot print stack trace followed by return false. If everything succeeds, then we're going to return true. So the reason why we created this method called go to home page is because we're going to use it in this other base class down here called base test. Let's go ahead and do that now. We're going to open up base test. 
And in order to have access to those methods that we created up here in this base page, we're going to need to write here extends base page. And remember, I said we were going to get rid of all these references to the driver. We can do that now because we have implemented everything up here in the base page class. So let's go ahead and remove this here. We're also going to remove this and we're simply going to call the method in the base page. That message is going to be go to home page. We'll do the same thing down here and we're going to say close browser. We no longer need these imports up here, so we'll delete them. And look how clean and beautiful this looks. So the last thing I'm going to do is make an assertion here. Since this method is returning a Boolean on purpose, as we can see here, we're going to use that return statement. We're going to use the return value to make the assertion. I'm going to say assert dot assert true. Next, we're going to add our own error message and say something like an error occurred while navigating to the home page. So now that we cleaned up this base test class, we're going to take a look at our test now in the home page test class. Here we still have references to the web driver. We're going to get rid of this by creating some methods in the home page page object. Let's go over there now. I'm going to open this class here, home page, and I'm going to create a method here. This is going to be public. It's going to return a string and we're going to call it get page title. This is going to return the page title. So we're going to say return driver dot get title. Notice the driver is not recognized and that is because we have not yet extended the base page class. Recall that we said that all these page objects are going to be extending the base page class so that we can have access to the common methods and objects inside of that class. So we'll go ahead and say here extends base page and that should take care of that error. Now we can use this method here get page title in our tests. Let's go back to our test and the first thing we need to do in order to gain access to that method is to create an instance of this home page class. We'll do that up here and say home page, we'll call it home page equal to new home page. Now we can get rid of this driver.getTitle and replace that with home page dot get page title. You may be wondering why we created an instance of this class up here instead of inside of this method. We did so so that we can have access to this object from any method within this class. If I move this line of code inside of this method, then I will not be able to call the home page from this other method, unless I create a new instance of home page inside of this method also. To fix this other method here, where we have a reference to the driver, we're going to need to create a new method that gets the welcome message. So let's go back to the home page. And this time we're going to create a new method and say public. It will also return a string and call it get welcome message. And here we're just going to say return. Let's go back to our test and just grab this code here and we'll paste it here. Now we will go back to our test and use this method. So let's go back here and instead of this code, we're going to say home page dot get welcome message. And now we have achieved the goal of removing all references to the web driver and also references to locators. Now we can see what our tests are doing instead of how they are doing it. The what part is covered here and the how is covered in the page object over here. Let's go back to our test and let's add a custom error message here in case that this assertion fails. And we'll say welcome message did not match. The last thing that I want to show you today is on this page object for the home page. Notice that we have hard coded this XPath locator right here. It is common practice to place all the locators at the beginning of your class. So we're going to do this here and say by, I'm going to call this welcome message is equal to by dot XPath. And in here, I'm going to place this XPath. 
Now I can remove this code here and simply say welcome message. Notice that this code looks very clean now. This will also help during test maintenance. Just imagine if you had a lot of more methods here and each method had different locators. If a test fails, you would have to track down each method to fix your test. In this way, by placing all the locators up here at the beginning of the class, you can quickly find the locator and fix it. It also makes your locators reusable so that they can be used in multiple methods. The last thing for us to do now is to run our test to make sure that everything's passing. So let's go back to our test class here. I'm going to go here and run all the tests. And we can see that everything passed. I hope that you can now see how easy and convenient it is to use the page object model when building an automation framework. We will continue to use it as we move forward in building our framework. Thanks so much for watching. Please support the channel by subscribing and liking. See you in the next video. Thank you.